Hello, this is the first of our introduction to Revit videos. What we are going to be covering today is basically how to get started, a little overview of the screen and looking at our levels. So first of all, once we've opened the program, we get the options by here of loading up a file. Now you've got pre-existing files along here, ones you may have worked on before, or some of the sample projects. And over here, we'll notice there's models and there's families. We want to open a new model, okay? And then it asks you what type of template you want. And we're gonna select architectural for what we want and click okay. So we just give it a few little moments to load up. You'll notice that it's loaded us on level zero. So when we look in our project browser down here in the bottom left hand side, we can see we've got our floor plans, level zero, level one and the site plan. And then you've got other things here like your 3D views and your elevations. And you've got these little plus signs where you can open and have a look which ones there are. OK, this main area of the screen is called our view window. That's where we do all our drawing. On the left hand side over here, we have our properties. So this will show the properties of whatever element of the building you have clicked on and highlighted. So it could be a wall, a roof, or anything. At the moment, because nothing is selected, it's showing the properties of this view. So we can see what scale and various other features, some of which we'll look at in future videos. This here, this little box, is what we call a type selector. This will be used quite a lot in different features and different commands during the videos that we make. Across the top, we have our command tabs. These categorize the commands into groups together. So for example, the annotate tab, we can see we can do writing, we can do dimensions and various other things. Massing and site does things to do with the site. And the architecture one covers a lot of standard features within a building, such as walls, doors, windows, uh, roofs, floors, these sorts of things. And then below the tabs, you have all the commands. When you click on a command, I'll just click on the wall one for a, give you an example. This bar by here highlights green and gives you various options. This is the options bar. And you can now see what I was talking about with the type selector, how there are now various types available. And that will change based on whatever command we are doing. So I've just pressed escape a couple times now to get out of that. <clears throat> on the screen, we have these circles with little black arrows on them. These are cameras. These are what generate the elevations. So be very careful not to delete them because you'll delete your elevation view as well. They can be gotten back, but for now, we don't want to delete them. If we wish to move these around, be careful because they are made up of a couple different elements. So the way to do it is to click with the mouse and drag the mouse over it and then move the cursor back to it and you've got the arrows and then you can grab it and drag it and put it where you want it. So dependent on how big your building is, you may well wish to resize than the area and put the cameras in a different place. If you are using a mouse, 
use the scroll button on the mouse, roll it back and forth to zoom in and out. If you press and hold the scroll button, you can pan the screen around like so. If you are using a laptop without a mouse, you can use the little bars on the sides, okay, to move around and you've got the zoom commands over here in the right hand side. It, I'd strongly encourage you though to get a mouse, even if you've got a laptop and just plug it in, it is far quicker and easier for you to use it. Now down the bottom of the screen, we see a few little options here. Um, some of these we'll use in different videos. So we've got the scale of the drawing. We've got the detail level of the drawing. And we've got what type of view we have. So we're going to leave those as they are at the moment. The first thing we want to do when creating a new Revit project is think about the levels that our building is going to be at. So what we're going to do is swap to one of our elevations. So I'm going to double click on the east elevation in the project browser. And it brings up these existing level markers. So at the moment, we can see we've got level zero and we've got level one at a height of four meters or 4,000 millimeters. So dependent on the type of building that you're doing, you will have these levels set to various um, different presets. So level zero, um, I'm going to change the name of that to ground floor. So I'm going to click on it once and it highlights that level. And then I'll click on the writing again. And now it brings up this little box where I can just change it. So I'm going to go call it zero round floor and press enter and it asks would you like to rename corresponding views it's important that we say yes to this because when we do it will then rename what we have in the project browser if you say no it'll get very confusing later on um, and you don't want that so always say yes and I'm actually going to tick the box saying don't show me the message again and just say yes, because I'm quite happy for it always to change name in the project browser when I actually change it by here. There we go. We can now see in the project browser, we got level zero ground floor. Then I'm going to change the second one to number one first floor. And again, press enter and that's changed. And we can see in the project browser, it's also changed. So I've just clicked over by here now to deselect these. Now, if you're doing a house, you might want the ground floor at level zero and then the first floor at 2.6 meters and maybe the wall plate at five meters. If you're doing a commercial building, you would have the heights set appropriately. So what I'm going to do is think, well, maybe I'm looking at something along the lines of a hotel where we've got the first floor, that ground floor, with a much higher ceiling. So we've got here our reception area, maybe a restaurant, those sorts of rooms. High ceiling will look nice. Um, while it's on the floors up above, it's going to be the bedrooms and therefore the ceiling difference won't need to be so great. So I'm quite happy with four meters between these, but I now want to add in a couple other levels. So on the architecture tab, go across to the right hand side and we've got the level command. So I'm going to click on that now. And in the options bar, we can see it says make plan view and we want to keep that ticked. So it will generate plan views of each of these levels. Now, what I'm going to do is as I move the cursor, so don't press any buttons on the mouse, just move the cursor 
and you'll notice when I get to the end of one of the existing lines, this blue dotted line appears, showing me that it's in line. And then I can go up and we can see there the blue numbers telling me the distance. So I'm going to go up 3000. So I want three meters between my levels. Now you'll notice that I'm going to press escape a couple times here. But my one, oh, I've done it the other way around. Oh dear. Well, let's click on the line and you'll see this little square box either end. We can untick it on the one side, retick it on the other side, and now all this information is on the same side as the other levels and it looks nice and tidy. So I'm going to put a couple more levels in. Taking my time to line them up. Press escape and again. And now I'll just go through and rename these. There we go. And that sets up our levels for this drawing. And we can see now in the project browser, we have each of those levels as a floor plan. That concludes our first video.